It was a time when nuclear tensions were high, and a fifth grade girl wrote the leader of the then Soviet Union with a simple, if profound, question. Moraka remembers America's littlest diplomat. The Soviet Union does believe that a nuclear war is possible, is survivable, and is winnable by them. In 1982, at one of the frostiest moments in the Cold War, a fifth grade girl from Manchester, Maine, named Samantha Smith, wrote a letter to Soviet Union leader Yuri Andropov. I have been worrying about Russia and the United States getting into a nuclear war, she wrote. Are you going to vote to have a war or not? If you aren't, please tell me how you are going to help not have a war. P.S. Please write back. It's a little bit hard to understand on the news because they, they put it in grown-up words. When Andropov did write back, it made national news. The letter, postmarked Moscow, arrived today by registered mail. It was sent to Manchester, Maine. Samantha went on Nightline with Ted Koppel. Samantha, you've got quite a pen pal there. What did he write to you? Well, I asked him, why do you want to conquer the world? And he wrote back to me and said that he wanted nothing of the kind. In his letter, Andropov invited Samantha and her parents to visit the Soviet Union. The Soviets continued treating 11-year-old Samantha Smith almost as if she were a visiting head of state. During their two-week trip, Samantha became one of the Cold War's most improbable peace ambassadors. Uh, would you please tell me the feeling of a girl whose dream is coming true? Huh? What do you feel I now? I can't explain it. It's yeah? just terrific. In the Soviet Union, Samantha Smith was a superstar. She also had a camera. She had a Polaroid camera. <gasps> Lori Labar is curator of the Maine State Museum in Augusta. There's a couple of pictures here where you just see there's photographers everywhere. And here she is taking a picture of all the people taking pictures at her. Why the Kremlin invited Samantha to the USSR was a matter of speculation. That was one of the concerns that people had in the United States about her going was that she was going to be a tool of the Soviets, a, a propaganda dupe. dupe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't think anybody was prepared for Samantha, frankly, because she was guileless. I think that just enchanted everybody. At Camp Artek in Crimea, Samantha was welcomed by thousands of Soviet kids, few of whom had ever even met an American. In a camp tradition, she threw a bottle with a message of peace into the Black Sea. There's a wonderful cartoon that Don Wright did. And so here are the warheads. And there's this girl just lightly leaping from warhead to warhead, which I thought was a fabulous encapsulation of her whole trip. Back home in Maine, Samantha was greeted with a parade. She put us on the map nationwide. Do you know what Bolshoi means, really? Great and charmed Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Yeah, great, or big. That's all it means. You didn't know any Russian. No, I didn't. I knew what it meant. <laughs> this is a picture of her at the school. It kind of looks the same, doesn't it? I think we still have some of these desks, don't you? Today at Manchester Elementary, the very school Samantha went to 40 years ago, students learn about her peace mission. She communicated with love and kindness and um, she made the world a better place. Makes me feel like even kids at my age can make a big world change. Samantha, I call her Sam. Jessica Dwyer was Samantha's classmate and a close friend. Because I think she still wanted to be a normal 11-year-old <laughs> girl. Dwyer says Samantha never bragged about what a big deal she'd become. Except for that time, she made a guest appearance on the sitcom Charles in Charge. Hey! Hey, hey! Hi, Charles. Oh, she did Why? share because. that. Because of Scott Bayo. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, my only request was that she bring back his autograph. <laughs> and she did. Sadly, Samantha Smith's life ended only two years after her trip to the Soviet Union. In 1985, heading home from filming a TV series, the small plane she and her father were in crashed, killing all eight on board. She was 13 years old. How did your 13-year-old brain even process that she had died? It took me a long time to accept it. 
um, and I'll share this, I haven't shared it with very many people, I always thought that she and her dad were escaped the plane and were in a tree living this great life. And I think that was just my way of keeping her memory alive. Today, there's a statue of Samantha in Augusta, a monument to the girl nicknamed America's littlest diplomat.